Shalom, and welcome to GMS Prophecy Soup. Now, if you brothers have been watching the news lately, there's been a whole lot going on in the news. Now, as we get closer to 2011 and to 2012, it's going to be one hell of a transition, and it's going to be one bumpy year, and it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. It's going to catch a lot of so-called Israelite groups off guard. But our job here at GMS is to gather this intel and to give it to you brothers because we are the watchers and it's your brother's job to do the same exact thing. Now the first article we're gonna get into is called Senators Demand the Military Lockup of American Citizens in a Battlefield they define as being right outside your window. Now mind you, this act here, which is called the Defense Authorization Act, this was actually passed this year, uh, this so-called Thanksgiving. So while everybody was chopping up the turkey, spreading cranberry sauce, praying to Caesar Borgia, they were passing the Defense Authorization Act, and they did pass it. Now basically what this act says is that the war on terror has expanded from the Middle East to American soil. So your front yard where you live right now is an actual battlefield. The military, the police department, the feds, any eight so-called law enforcement agency can be sent to your house right now. They can detain you indefinitely. No trial, no right to a lawyer. Now, if you brothers have been noticing lately, the so-called police force has been militarized. They've been using military tactics. And to look deeper into this issue, alternate reporter Rania Kalik joins us now. Thanks for coming on the show, Rania. So we're seeing these images of police brutality. Do you think police are growing increasingly violent in America, or are we just seeing more of these images because of the coverage of the protest? Um, well, it, it's not that police are suddenly growing increasingly violent. It's that uh, for the past 40 years, between the war on drugs and then the war on terror, we've been um, arming and training police uh, in the same way that we uh, train military soldiers, and um, it's only um, it only makes sense that at some point that same um, the same tactics being used by the military would uh, would rub off, if that, if you will. Their weapons have been upgraded. They've been given, given uh, military grade weapons, and this whole Occupy Wall Street thing, Occupy across America, this is all set up by the Illuminati. All right, so that the police can get their can get practice in how to deal with these people, how to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, how to use their new military tactics, their new weapons. And they have been using these weapons that we've been telling you brothers about for a long time. Their, their newest one that I read about is something called the Super Taser, which is like a t uh, taser on steroids. And they hold this taser like a shotgun. It's got a handle, it's got a trigger and they can shoot you from a long distance with this. For now, we're talking about the Super Taser shotgun that is uh, being um, assessed by the Home Office. It fires a bullet that is not attached to the gun in any way, a uh, 100 feet, up to a 100 feet, and um, once make, has made contact with, uh, with a body, fires a 500-volt wireless uh, bullet into it, and it's, it goes on for 20 seconds. 20 seconds. That's a very, very long time. And at the same time, while they're doing all this, is FEMA has been accelerating their FEMA camp program. And there's FEMA camps all across the United States. And as a matter of fact, because of this new National Defense Authorization Act, if you have more than seven days worth of food in your house, you're automatically a suspected terrorist. Know good and well that someday there could be a government in power that is shipping its citizens off for disagreements. There are laws on the books now that characterize who might be a terrorist. Someone missing fingers on their hands is a suspect, according to the Department of Justice. Someone who has Guns, someone who has ammunition that is weatherproofed, someone who has more than seven days of food in their house can be considered a potential terrorist. And you know what's funny about that? The funny thing is that all these so-called churches, these 501c3 charter churches, 
they're in league with the government, they're in league with the feds, and the first place that the government is going to go to to get a list already made up for them, nice and pretty, of suspected terrorists is to these churches. And just recently, the feds ordered the so-called Mormon church to give up a list of all their partitioners that have ordered um, bulk supplies of food from them. Because the Mormons, they have facilities where you can actually order a bulk supply of food. And they actually ordered them to give up that list of anybody had, that has bought a bulk supply of food for them. So all you so-called churches, or you so-called even Israelite churches that have sold out, like General Gehenna and Comfy's church, and any other so-called Israelite church out there that has sold out, your name is on that list. If you're a part of that church, you're a suspected terrorist, and you will be you will be carted off to a concentration FEMA camp. So until the next show, I'm going to say shalom, and leave you with a couple of scriptures: Revelation 12 and 12, Isaiah 10 and 1, Isaiah 32 and 7.